welcome back to another review. In today's episode I want to take a look at another model that was a recent purchase by the brilliant Greens 3D, which is in actual fact the Dalek Emperor as seen in the TV21 comics from the 1960s. As per usual I would like to begin by taking a look at the packaging, but since it's merely a cardboard box I thought it'd be more interesting to take a brief history tour on this certain design of Dalek. So the Golden Emperor first appeared in the TV21 comic strips that were produced in the early 1960s. He was the first Emperor to ever be devised in Dalek history and had an interesting appearance. But comparing the model to some of the artist's drawings is very complicated considering the design changed from story to story or even from page to page. So from what I can gather, it's more of an amalgamation of several different designs. So taking a look at the model, you can tell that a lot of care and thought has been put into this. The sheer amount of detail is something that I've not seen on any other Emperor model before. The whole thing has been printed in resin, giving the whole body a nice smooth finish. Even though the design is simple yet effective, it just screams nostalgia when looking back at the 60s counterparts. So beginning with the top, you have the six dome lights, which are actual fact modelled on the movie Dalek lights and they are very detailed with all the ridges and the curves and whatnot and they've also included the little dip on the top which is sadly missing on the character options versions. The eye stalk is also very reminiscent to the 60s counterpart with all the rings going down the eye stalk with a black glossy bulb at the end with the pupil being white. The other little details that you can usually find on other Daleks are the gun and plunger arms, which are both very detailed, especially on the gun, which has got all the little rings and whatnot going up the barrel. But another little add-on is the inclusion of the nozzle being painted black, which is something that I've wanted character options to tackle, as it gives a bit more depth to the gun itself and makes the sculpt look like it's actually hollow. Now to talk about the body itself, beginning at the top you have the iconic bulbous dome, which has mainly been airbrushed in a light bronze, with all the extra panel details being painted in a light gold. The same colour palette has been applied for the midsection with the bands itself being in gold and the same bronze on the gun box and the same have been applied on the skirt section with the skirt being painted bronze and the hemispheres being painted in that brilliant gold. In regards to the shape you can tell that the proportions are very off when it comes to your standard Dalek. For starters you only have three rows of hemispheres and the dimensions are just completely well off. Finally taking a look at the fender this has just been painted in a gloss black and instead of having any edges going along the front and the sides it is more circular. Another little detail that I should mention is that there is no wheels on the bottom uh, but instead we do have three little raised pieces to represent the direction motor globes as seen on some of the CGI models we've seen throughout New Who. It's a nice little attention to detail and makes this figure feel less of a toy. I mean that is one thing that people need to take into consideration as this is in actual fact something to be admired from in a distance and not actually meant to be played with as some of the elements are very delicate and could easily break off if you are not careful. So beginning with the articulation it's pretty similar to the Dalek toys so for example the head can rotate a full 360 degrees. The eye stalk can pivot up and down and in actual fact can be displayed looking downwards at his Dalek army or at his enemies on a high plinth. The gun and plunger have free movement on the ball joints, however I would say be slightly careful because of how stiff they are and it could mean they could snap off with too much pressure being applied. Overall this Emperor Dalek has to be one of the best on the market thus far. Like I said the sheer amount of dedication that has been put into this is outstanding. It definitely does capture those early looks that for what we saw in the comics. I mean the fact that they brought it back for Time Lord Victorious shows that the design was so iconic. Once again I want to give a massive shout out to the Prydonian and Greens 3D for creating such a significant piece. The craftsmanship alone is beyond outstanding here. I've been wanting to grab one of these for absolutely ages and it's nice to finally have one in hand. If you're wanting to grab one of these yourself then I highly recommend grabbing one of these off of Green's website which I will link down in the description. It's truly something that I would recommend any of the TV21 comics fans or even a Dalek fan alone as it's something that I know character options are most likely never going to release. Speaking of which, here is the Emperor Dalek posed along with some of the movie Daleks that we got some time ago and the Emperor definitely sits well with all the other figures on the shelf and I definitely can't wait to display this piece with all my other Hartnell related figures as this is definitely going to be going along with all my other 60s Daleks. So thank you all very much for watching this review, I hope in the near future to be back with some more projects so stay tuned for then.